disclaimer, the author does not claim ownership of the documents, images, audio, music, video, and other materials used in this letter. They remain the property of the original creators, who are mentioned in the acknowledgement section of this lesson. The said materials are used for educational purposes only. Thank you very much. Installing and configuring computer systems, MELT, L01, Assemble Computer Hardware, Codes, TLE underscore IACSS 9-12, ICCS IAP28. Lesson 2, Computer Hardware Disassembly and Assembly. Content Standard, the learners demonstrate an understanding of concepts and principles in installing and configuring computer systems. Performance standards, the learners shall be able to install and configure computer systems based on established procedures and system requirements. Lesson 2, Computer Hardware Disassembly and Assembly. Objectives, at the end of the lesson 80% of the students will be able to. Number 1. Identify the tools used in PC assembly and disassembly. Number 2. Enumerate the steps in disassembling and assembling the system unit. Number 3. Point out and demonstrate how to disassemble and assemble parts of the system unit. Number 4. Follow the correct procedure of disassembling and assembling a computer system. What's in? One of the basic skills that you must acquire in computer system servicing is to independently assemble and disassemble a personal computer or simply setting up a PC. After knowing the importance of occupational and health procedures, I believe that you are now ready to gain another experience by going through this lesson. What's new? When referring to hardware, assemble is the act of connecting together the different parts of a computer. Disassemble is the process of breaking down a device into separate parts to help determine a problem, to replace a part, or take the parts and use them in another device or sell them individually. Remember the safety precautions. Number 1. Do not work alone so that there's someone who can take care of you in case of an emergency. Number 2. Always ground or discharge yourself before touching any part of the computer. Number 3. Always power off the computer and unplug the computer before working on it. Number 4. Be careful with tools that may cause a short circuit. Number 5. Do not use excessive force if things don't quite slip into place. Number 6. Hold the components on the edges and do not touch the integrated circuit and IC parts. Number 7. Make sure that the pins are properly aligned when connecting a cable connector. Number 8. Use a brush, compressed air, or blower in cleaning the computer system. Number 9. Clean the area before and after using it to maintain sanitation and prevent accidents. Plan and preparing diagnostic procedure troubleshooting plan for personal computer. Number 1. Trial and error. When you find a faulty component in your computer, check it with the other computer so that you can make sure whether the fault is in the computer or not. Number 2. Check cables. In case of any device failure, check all the cables of your computer such as data cables, power cables, internal circuitry cables, and make sure that all these are plugged in and working fine. Number 3. Hardware settings. Check the hardware settings in the CMOS and in the device manager of the system and make all the device drivers are up to date and all the cards are plugged in properly. Number 4. Notice changes. When you notice a software or hardware error in your computer, determine what was changed before the problem occurred. Number 5. Event viewers. In the event viewer, you will find the error or warning messages associated with any faulty hardware or software. Number 6. Notice changes. When you notice a software or hardware error in your computer, determine what was changed before the problem occurred. Tools used in PC assembly and disassembly. Number 1. Anti-static mat or ground mat is one of a number of anti-static devices designed to help eliminate static electricity. Number 2. Anti-static wrist strap, ESD wrist strap, 
or a ground bracelet is an anti-static device used to safely ground a person working on very sensitive electronic equipment to prevent the buildup of static electricity on their body, which can result in electrostatic discharge, ESD. Number 3. Phillips and flathead screwdriver used to loosen or tighten crosshead and slotted screws. Number 4. Magnifying glass is a convex lens that is used to produce a magnified image of an object. Number 5. Compressed air used to blow away dust and debris from different computer parts without touching the component. Number 6. Cable tie or tie wrap, also known as a hose tie, clap strap, or a zip tie, is a type of fastener for holding items together, primarily electric cables or wires. It used to bundle cables neatly inside and outside of a computer. Number 7. Wire cutter. It is used to strip and cut wires. Number 8. Thermal grease, also called CPU grease, or heat sink compound, is a kind of thermally conductive, but usually electrically insulating, adhesive, which is commonly used as an interface between heat sinks and heat sources, example, high-power semiconductor devices. Computer Hardware Disassembly and Assembly Steps on how to disassemble computer system Step 1. Detach the power cable, unplug all the outside cables and wires attached to the channel. Step 2. Remove the cover, remove the side pane and outer case of the chassis. Step 3. Remove the power supply, push the power supply from the outside, and then lift it up. Step 4. Remove the drives. The floppy disk drive, optical disk drive, and hard disk drive unplug the cables from the back of the drive. Once that is completed, pull on the tab securing the drive in place, then push it out from the inside. Step 5. Remove the adapter cards. There are many types of expansion cards that can be installed in a computer, including sound, video, modem, network, interface card, and a number of others. If any wires are connected to the back of the expansion card, disconnect them from the card. Remove the screw holding the PCI card in place. Grab the top edge of the expansion card and pull up. Step 6. Remove the memory module. Memory modules are mounted on the motherboard as the chips that can be damaged by manual force if applied improperly. Be careful and handle the chip only by the edges. Step 7. Remove the motherboard before removing all the connectors from the motherboard. Make sure you memorize the connectors for assembling the computer if required, as that may require connecting the connectors at its place. Locate and remove all screws securing the motherboard to the motherboard tray behind. Grasp the main board at the two shorter sides and lift it up by tilting the drive side up first. Release the I.O. cluster from the case, then lift straight up. Step 8. Remove the CPU fan and heat sink. The CPU fan is located right on top of the screen. Step 9. Remove the CPU. Flip the metal bar to loosen the metal clamp that holds the CPU in place. Carefully raise the clamp away from the CPU after you loosen it. Use two fingers to lift the CPU out of its socket. Lift the processor directly upward and avoid moving it side to side while in its socket. Good job CSS student! Now that you are done with the PC disassembly, you have gained enough skills. Next in line is the PC assembly. Exert more effort and patience. Just follow the step-by-step -step procedures and illustration and surely you can make it. Good luck! Step 1. Install the CPU. The first step for assembling the computer system starts with mounting the processor on the processor socket of motherboard. Carefully line up the pin and place the chip in its socket. It will fit only when oriented the proper way. Align triangular CPU and socket key marks. Lower the lever to lock the CPU into place. 
Step 2. Install the CPU heat sink. The heat sink will be attached on top of processor. The CPU fan is also attached on top of heat sink. Attach the clip that holds the heat sink in place keeping in mind that it may require a fair amount of force. Plug the CPU fan's power connector into the proper part. Step 3. Place the motherboard into the case. Now the motherboard is to be fixed vertically in tower case and the screws are fixed from behind of the motherboard. Step 4. Install memory modules or RAM modules. In order to install the memory modules, insert them into the proper sockets and push down firmly but evenly until the clips on both sides of the socket pops into place. Step 5. Install the adapter cards. Install the internal cards to its socket. Carefully position the card above the slot and press down firmly to seat the card. Secure the card with a screw. Step 6. Install internal drives. Install the optical disk drive at the top front end of the cabinet and screw it. Install the hard disk drive and floppy disk drive below optical disk drive and screw it. Make sure once screwed there is no vibration in either of the optical disk drive, hard disk, or floppy disk drives. Step 7. Connect the power supply. Now line up the power supply at the top back end of the cabinet and screw it. Plug the power connectors from your power supply into the matching port on your motherboard. As always, refer to your motherboard's manual for the exact locations. Step 8. Cover the side panel. Cover the tower by placing it and pressing towards front side and screw it. Step 9. Connect the external devices. Connect the external devices with CPU at its appropriate socket. It includes mouse and keyboard at PS2 or USB connectors. Monitor at the video output socket. Connect the power cable to the back of power. Plug in the power cable to electric board. Congratulations for doing a great job. Now it's time to perform all the activities prepared for you. Good luck! Thank you for watching. Do not forget to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell icon. And also don't forget to like, comment and share. See you next time. Keep safe, and God bless.